very brief recap. We now have established the title. The title is The Choice. And we all know what the choice is about, right? We also know this story has how many characters? Three, four, five characters. You can see over here. Pluto, Hera, the narrator, either he or she, the survival, which is groaning, musical notes, and also the child, okay, which you all have probably decided or defined that it is not alive anymore. Okay, now we have also established a dilemma. The dilemma, dilemma of the choice, whether which to save, and it's quite clear which one the narrator should save, right, or, or has decided to save, right? Yeah, it's quite clear now, right, that you have decided that he will probably walk over to Pluto to save the groaning guy or girl, that is, the survivor. Okay, now we have also established a setting, it is a earthquake. Where the earthquake happened, do we know? We do not know. So what do you think you want to find out more from reading the story? Where is it? Maybe? How the narrator say? The groaning man? And there's something else you forgot. Miss Marisa posed your question. What is the relationship between the characters? Do you think there's a relationship between the characters? Maybe? Let's read on to find out, shall we? Okay, in case you want to know what an earthquake caused, this is a real life picture of the damage of the aftermath on the earthquake. Okay, I can review this now because we all know it's an earthquake. Mm -hmm. So you'll be seeing this quite a bit. So read on. So I'm going to ask this question over here. What do you think the narrator is feeling now? We all know that he felt a sense of relief, right? Because he knew which, which person to save. But what do you think he is feeling now? As he was saving. How do you think he was feeling? Scared? Should he say scared? Yes? How do we know that he's feeling scared? We can read on, we can find clues, we can infer from the clues from the passage. Look at these few words. Okay? The narrator didn't dare to even look at the child. Okay, that few that probably you have a sense that the narrator is quite afraid. Why? Right? Even though he has made the choice, he's feeling he's probably feeling a bit guilty that he had to make this choice. That's why he didn't even dare to look at the child. And he actually closed his eyes when he was digging to look for the groaning, the survivor. Right? And you also we all you find that he's feared, he's fearful. Why? Why is he so afraid? The body that has grown, that had grown, but have lost limbs or legs, or died, sorry. Right? Will you be afraid to see someone after digging through and you find someone without limbs, without legs or hands? Or even so, he has eventually, he or she has eventually died. Will you be afraid to find out? Yes, right? You definitely be very afraid, right? Now, after reading on, do we now have a clearer idea of what the face means? Can we put the relationship to the face? What's the face referring to? Right after they dig, they dark, they found the face, right? Looking at them. So what's the face? The survivor. A survivor. But before that, the face is actually the face of a middle-aged man. And we now know who the survivor is. We have cleared one mystery of the character of the survivor. Okay, the survivor is actually a middle-aged man. Do you think the survivor is alive? Yes. yes. Why? Do you have any clues in the message to tell us or to suggest that? Blinking. Very good. Okay, it's blinking in the torch line. Okay, when if someone shines, imagine you are trapped under it, it's so dark, and someone shines light into your face, will you flinch or will you blink? Definitely you feel uncomfortable. There's another clue actually. That you all have seen it and heard about it or read about it. And it's also in this paragraph. Groaned. Yes, Brina? Groaned. Will a dead person groan? No, right? You will, you definitely grow when you're alive, right? So definitely, okay, the survivor is alive. And also, also we have the, the narrator or the author has very cleverly used the word survivor. The root word of survivor is survive. So he has survived. He or she has survived. So yes, he is alive. Okay? Now, what will you feel if you are the middle-aged man? How will you feel? You have 
gone through this terrible earthquake and you have been trapped under a fallen building for two days, what will you feel? Relief. Relief? When you see? When you see someone? Okay, because you're groaning, why well, you groan probably to probably out of pain, probably hoping that someone will come and save you to alert attention. Okay, you'll probably also feel painful if you're injured. Right? You don't know whether the middle-aged man is injured or not, right? And last but not least, now some there's this weird number that we see here. Anyone knows or can predict what this number means? Right? Ambulance. The narrator took out a phone and dealt number 119, right? Ambulance. ambulance? Why do you think it's ambulance? And why is it this number? Do you call ambulance at this number? That's the American one? Maybe it's some a number for other country. I, we don't know. We still don't know where this place took place, right? Remember? We knew that earthquake happened, but we don't know where this took place. Do you think that this number is a hint to telling us where this earthquake happened? Let's read on to find out more. Are you all done? Ah, I heard a lot. Oh, ah. So now, do you know which place, where this earthquake took place? Yes. So now it makes sense, right? 119 probably is a number to dial for this emergency earthquake emergency helpline. Okay, that's why it's, it's not local. That's why we don't recognize the number 119 at all. Okay, so you know where the, now who the, uh, the narrator called? Now, there's something very weird here. Okay, just take a look at these two sentences. Said a voice in Japanese, and I replied in English. I don't think it's very weird. When you give a friend a call, and your friend picks up and says, hello, will you speak to him or reply to him or her in a different language? Will you reply to him or her in your mother tongue? No, right? If you are comfortable with English, you will definitely reply him back in the language he spoke to you, right? So what does this suggest? Maybe the narrator is a tourist. It probably gives us a hint that the narrator is not a local, right? And if you want to look back, we have actually already established this. Okay, Miss Marisa actually had this passage. Do you also remember? I'd never been to your country before. Right? It gives us a great hint that actually this, the narrator, is not local. So who do you think the narrator is? Well, Michelle says the narrator may have been a tourist. Any other clues? Any other predictions? Can the narrator be a rescue worker? Yeah? yeah? Can be, right? Whether we will find out what the, the, his role is, the narrator's role is, probably we'll find out, probably we'll not. Let's read out to find out, okay? Better reviews to us. Oh, another question. Why do you think the narrator called for an ambulance? Someone predicted ambulance correctly just now. Why do you think he called for an ambulance? Remember that question I asked you? How would you feel if you were the man trapped under the building for two days and he was groaning? The survivor. Probably the survivor was injured. That's why he needed an ambulance, right? Medical help. Okay, so let's read on. Mm. Are you all done? Don't you think that the story now develops into back into a conversation? Previously, we started off, remember? By uh, we established that this is the first person narrative. It was like a conversation. Someone, an I, the narrator, was talking to a you, someone. Right? And then he was recounting, he was giving a story of what happened, a recount of what happened. And then finally in this passage, so there you are. This is how I saved you. You finally see the I's and you's again. Don't you think that this gives us a great hint that probably the recount has already ended? And he's probably telling, talking to the person again. Can you see the flow? Right? Okay, so remember we have we have various characters, we have established that. And Miss Marisa also asked you this question. Do you think there's a relationship between the narrator and the survivor? Do you think there's any relationship? 
Well, from the story itself, we don't know whether they're related, but we do know that the narrator actually saved the survivor, right? Okay, he actually saved the survivor. So that's all we know from the story itself. Okay, now, so we have established, we have established the narrator, we have established the survivor, which is a middle-aged man. What about the child? Is there any hint here that tells you the identity of the child that we found? Do take note, the story did say that this is a building, a fallen building. So the two of them may have or are actually living under one roof. So can you tell from this passage a clue of who this child may be? Ah, the survivor's daughter. Some Jethro said the survivor's daughter, right? How do you how do you know? You actually you actually have to read this line. And this is how I found your daughter. Okay, so the narrator actually said that he or she found the middle man, uh, middle-aged man daughter, the survivor's daughter. Okay, so now we know that maybe it's a high clue, the child is the daughter. Because they're living, firstly, they are living under the same building, same roof. Secondly, the narrator actually told the man or the survivor that the, he actually found the daughter. And read on she he or she, the, 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 the narrator, further explained that she did not hurt or harm. Right? And I can assure you that your daughter must have died quickly when the building collapsed. So you see, the narrator already knows that the daughter is dead. So he or she, I think, he knows that the child is, is the daughter. Now, why do you think the narrator decided to tell the, the survivor or the, the middle-aged man, I can assure you that your daughter must have died quickly? when the building collapsed and not while you're being saved. Why do you think it had to say that? Alleviate the survivor's guilt. Alleviate the survivor's guilt? Can you use another word to, to explain what's alleviate? Maybe reduce. Reduce? Yeah, reduce. Why do you think? Make you feel better. Make you feel better, yes. Okay. Um, after knowing, now if you're on a middle-aged man, you're a survivor, to know that because you are, because the, in the process that he, the, the, the narrator had to make a choice between saving you and your daughter because you were saved. Therefore, your daughter died. Because there was only one choice the narrator could have taken. Would you feel guilty if you didn't know that actually your daughter was already dead before the choice was being made? Right? So he had to know, right? The narrator felt that he had to tell the man that the daughter has already died before he made the choice to save the man. And that's why the man was being saved and not the daughter itself, herself. Okay, so if you are the father, how would you feel about the author? If you are the survivor, how would you feel about the author? Would you feel resentful towards the author? Why did you save me? Why didn't you even try to save my daughter? Or would you feel thankful? This question will be answered by you in our next activity. <laughs> and how would you feel about the earthquake? Would you feel lucky that you, are, you, are, you survived the earthquake? Or would you feel unlucky because you have to go through this entire earthquake? Again, this answer will be answered by you during our next activity. Okay? So I know there's a lot of, uh, quite a bit to understand from this story. This story has a lot of suspense. We can see how the author actually injected a lot of suspense. Now, at the end of this, I just want to ask this brief question. What We have learned text types, we have learned fantasy, we have learned Recount, we have learned information report. What text type do you think this belongs to? Recount. Recount? Well done. Yeah, this is a recount. So, uh, uh, overriding question Do you think this is fiction or non fiction? Some of you are looking very confused now. Okay, if this has actually happened, okay, and the author is, is writing about, or the author or narrator is writing about, a true fact that has happened, a conversation, true conversation, we then can classify this under a factual recount. Then it's a non-fiction. But is there any hint in the story to tell you that this actually happened? Yeah. Okay, and I did my research in the last 10 years, there was no earthquake happening at this district, Tokyo. Okay, so we could probably say that this is actually the author, and the narrator is probably not the same person. The author is writing a story of this recount. And therefore, this classifies under fiction because this is not real. It's not a factual recount. 
Okay, it's about a story of someone recounting a, his story to another person. So this is not true, not real. Okay, so this is actually a fiction. So now we learn that actually recounts can be classified under both under fiction and non-fiction. To be more specific, factual recounts are non-fiction. Recounts generally we can classify under as fiction. Okay, so that's the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoyed uh, uh, this text. I know you'll be eager to read out, to read more. So we have printed hard copies. We didn't actually, but this is what we said <laughs> for you all to reread the story.